In this lecture, we will cover theory of boundary value analysis. Let's first see what is boundary value analysis. Boundary value analysis is used to test the values that exist on the boundaries of ordered equivalence partitions. Let's understand this. Suppose you gave set of data. Then, at the boundary, you have to apply the boundary value analysis. Before going further, you need to know that there are two approaches by which we can apply boundary value analysis. First is two-value boundary testing, and second is three-value boundary testing. If nothing is mentioned, then you have to apply two-value boundary testing. Now let's see a few examples to understand both approaches. Suppose this is the requirement. An input field accepts a single integer value as an input, and the valid range is from 1 to 5. Here it is clear that 1 and 5 are the boundary values. Now let's see how to apply two value boundary testing and three value boundary testing. For two value boundary testing, you need to take two values outside the range. Here we have to take 0 and 6. For three value boundaries testing, you need to consider two values outside the range and two values inside the range. First, we need to take 0 and 6, and then we need to test 2 and 4. Now, if you look at both the diagram, you can clearly see why they are named two value boundary testing and three value boundary testing. Here at each boundary, we are testing two values one at the boundary and one outside the boundary. And here at each boundary, we are testing three values one at the boundary, one outside the boundary, and one inside the boundary. Now let's see one more example for more clarity. Suppose the requirements is field accepts the values 1 to 10 in increments of 0 0.5. For this requirement, this is our boundary analysis diagram. Now let's draw two value boundary testing diagram. Since the increment value is 0 0.5, we need to take one value outside 1, and it will be 0 0.5. Other value is 10.5. Now let's move to the three value boundary testing. Here outside value is 0 0.5 and inside value is 1.5. And here the outside value is 10.5 and inside value is 9.5. I hope that you understand the topic. In the upcoming lectures, we will cover more examples. Here the question is, in a system designed to work out the tax to be paid, an employee has 4,000 euros of salary tax free. The next 1,500 is taxed at 10%. The next 28,000 after that is taxed at 22%. Any further amount is taxed at 40%. To the nearest whole pound, which of these is a valid boundary value analysis test case? And these are the options. To solve this question, first we have to draw a boundary value analysis diagram. And to do that, we need this data. As per the question, up to 4,000 the tax is free. So this is on boundary value. To find the next boundary, we need to read the second line. The next 1500 is taxed at 10%. To find the next boundary, we need to add 4000 and 1500, which is 5500. 55 is the next boundary. From 4000 to 5500, 10% tax lab is applicable. Now, to find the next boundary, we have to read the third line. The next 28,000 after that is taxed at 
Now we have to add 5,500 and 28,000 to get the next boundary. 5,500 plus 28,000 is 33,500. 33,500 is the next boundary. From 5,500 to 33,500, the tax rate is 22%. Any further amount is taxed at 40%. That means above 33,500 is taxed at 40%. This is the boundary value diagram. The first option is 28,000. Let's first see where it fits in this diagram. 28,000 will come between 5,500 and 33,500. Let's analyze the next option, which is 1,500. 1500 is less than 4000, so it will come somewhere here. Next option is 32001. 32001 will come between 5500 and 33500. Now the last option is 33501. And 33501 is just one value more than 33,500. That means this is just at the boundary. Compared to all the other values, option D is near to the boundary. Therefore, option D is the answer. Here the question is, an input field takes the year of birth between 1900 and 2004. The boundary values for testing this field are, and these are the options. To solve this question, first we have to draw a boundary value analysis diagram. It's clear from the question that 1900 and 2004 are the boundary values. So, this is how the boundary value diagram will look like. Now, we have to select the correct options. Let's start with the first option, 0, 1900, 2004, and 2005. This is how we can place them. Here, 0 and 2005 are outside the boundary, but 0 is not near 1900. That is why this is not the correct option. Now let's analyze the second option. The second option is 1900 and 2004. And we can place them like this. Both the values are at the boundary. Before discarding, let's look into other two options. The third option is 1899, 1900, 2004, 2005. And we can place it like this. This is a classic example of two-point boundary value analysis. Now let's move to the next option. The option 4 is 1899, 1900, 1901, 2003, 2004, and 2005. And we can place it here. This is a classic example of three-point boundary value analysis. Up to now, we know that the option 1 is wrong. Now we are left with option B, C, and D. Since in option B, outside values are not covered, this is not the correct answer. Now we are left with last two options. Since in the question nothing is mentioned, we have to select two-point boundary value analysis instead of three-point boundary value analysis. For this question, option C is the correct answer. Here the question is, you are a tester for a company that provides grading software for the local school districts. The grade boundaries are 75% pass, 85% distinctive, 
95% honorable. Using the three-value boundary value analysis technique, how many test cases would be required to cover the valid grade transitions? These are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. It's clearly mentioned 75%, 85%, and 95% are the boundaries. And here we need to figure out how many test cases are required to cover the valid grades. For 75% boundary, we can test 74%, 75%, and 76%. For 85% boundary, we can test 84%, 85%, and 86%. And for 95% boundary, we can test 94%, 95%, and 96%. If you count all the values, it's 9. That means we need 9 values to test the requirement. Here the question is, order numbers on a stock control system can range between 10,000 and 99,999 inclusive. Which of the following inputs might be a result of designing tests for only valid equivalence classes and valid boundaries? And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. It's clearly mentioned 10,000 and 99,999 are the boundaries. And here we need to find out valid equivalence classes and valid boundaries. Now we have to analyze each of this option to get the correct answer. Option A is 1,000, 5,000, and 99,999. Here two values are in invalid range and one value is in valid range. This is not the correct answer. Option B is 9,999, 50,000, and 100,000. Here again two values are in invalid range and one value is in valid range. Option C is 10,000, 50,000 and 99,999. Here all the options are in valid range. But before concluding, let's have a look into last options too. Option D is 10,000 and 99,999. Here also both the values are valid. Since in question they asked for both valid equivalence classes and valid boundaries, Option C is more suitable answer compared to option D. The reason is with option C, we are validating valid equivalence classes. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Here, the question is, the digital rainbow thermometer uses seven colors to show the ambient temperature. Each color spans a range of just 5 degrees Celsius, with an operating minimum and maximum of minus 5 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. Which of the following values is least likely to have been identified when applying the boundary value test design technique? And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, the minimum and maximum boundary is negative 5 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. That is why negative 5 is the lower boundary and 30 is the highest boundary. And as per the question, we have seven color bands, and each color spans a range of just 5 degrees Celsius. For each of the seven band, we have to draw the boundary starting from minus 5. So, 
in minus 5, we have to add 5, and we'll get 0. And 0 is the next boundary. Now in 0, we have to add 5, and we will get 5. Likewise, we have to continue until we reach 30. Now you can see, from minus 5 to 30, we have 7 color band. With this, the boundary value analysis diagram is ready. Now the question is, which of the following values is least likely to have been identified when applying the boundary value test design technique? To find the answer, we have to analyze all the options one by one. Option A is 30. We can place it here. Option B is 0. We can place it here. Option C is 8. We can place it here. And option D is 15. We can place it here. Now, from the analysis, it is clear that 8 is not in the boundary. That is why option C, 8, is the answer. Here the question is, a wholesaler sells printer cartridges. The minimum order quantity is 5. There is a 20% discount for orders of 100 or more printer cartridges. You have been asked to prepare test cases using various values for the number of printer cartridges ordered. Which of the following groups contain three test inputs that would be generated using boundary value analysis? And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, the minimum order quantity is 5. That is why 5 is the lower boundary. And as per the question, we have to give 20% discount for orders of 100 or more printer cartridges. That is why 100 is the upper boundary. With this, the boundary value diagram is ready. Now let's analyze each option one by one. Option A is 5, 6, 20. Option B is 4, 5, 80. Option C is 4, 5, 99. Option D is 1, 20, 100. Now as per the question, we have to find which of the following groups contain three test inputs that would be generated using boundary value analysis? In option A, 5 and 6 are at boundary, but 20 is not at boundary. In option B, 4 and 5 are at boundary, but 80 is not at the boundary. In option C, 4 and 5 at the lower boundary, and 99 is at upper boundary because at 100, an above 20% discount is given. In option D, 1 and 20 are not in the boundary and 100 is at the boundary. So, from the analysis, it is clear that option C is the answer. Here the question is, you are testing a machine that scores exam papers and assigns grades. Based on the score achieved, the grades are as follows. Here we have range and corresponding ratings. If you apply boundary value analysis, how many test cases will you need to achieve minimum test coverage? And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, the first range is from 1 to 49. Corresponding grade is F. From this we get two boundaries, 1 and 49, and F is the grade. Next range is from 50 to 59, and corresponding grade is D-. From this we get the next boundary, which is 59, and D- is the grade. Next range is from 60 to 69 and corresponding grade is D. From this we get the next boundary, which is 69, and D is the grade. Likewise, we have to cover all the range. 
If we do so, we will get all these boundaries. There are seven boundaries. Now, as per the question, we have to find how many test cases will you need to achieve minimum test coverage. What we need to know here is to cover one boundary, we need two values. So, for seven boundaries, we need 14 test cases. Therefore, option D is the answer. Here the question is, you are testing a scale system that determines shipping rates for a regional web-based auto parts distributor. Due to the regulations, shipments cannot exceed 100 pounds. You want to include boundary value analysis as part of your black box test design. How many tests will you need to execute to achieve 100% boundary value analysis? This is the weight and shipping cost table. And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, the first range is from 0 to 10. Corresponding shipping cost is $5. From this, we get two boundaries, 0 and 10, and 5% is the cost. Next range is from 11 to 25 and corresponding cost is $7.50. From this we get the next boundary, which is 25, and cost is $7.50. Likewise, we have to cover all the range. If we do so, we will get all these boundaries. There are five boundaries. Now as per the question, we have to find how many tests will you need to execute to achieve 100% boundary value analysis. What we need to know here is, to cover one boundary, we need two values. So, for five boundaries, we need ten test cases. Therefore, option C is the answer. Here the question is, a speed control and reporting system has the following characteristics. If you drive 50 kilometers per hour or less, nothing will happen. If you drive faster than 50 kilometers per hour, but no more than 55 kilometers per hour, you will be warned. If you drive faster than 55 kilometers per hour, but not more than 60 kilometers per hour, you will be fined. If you drive faster than 60 kilometers per hour, your driving license will be suspended. The speed in kilometers per hour is available to the system as an integer value, which would be the most likely set of values, kilometers per hour, identified by applying the boundary value analysis, where only the values on the boundaries of the equivalence classes are selected. And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, if you drive 50 kilometers per hour or less, nothing will happen. With this, we get 50 as lower boundary. Second question is, if you drive faster than 50 kilometers per hour, but no more than 55 kilometers per hour, you will be warned. From this, we get next boundaries, 55. Third condition is, if you drive faster than 55 kilometers per hour, but not more than 60 kilometers per hour, you will be fined. With this, we get 60 as next boundary. Fourth condition is, if you drive faster than 60 kilometers per hour, your driving license will be suspended. In the boundary value analysis diagram, we have to represent license suspended after 60 kilometers per hour. With this, the license boundary value analysis diagram is ready. Now let's analyze each of these options to get the correct answer. Option A is 0, 49, 50, 54, 59, 60. Option B is 50, 55, 60. Option C is 49, 50, 54, 55, 60, 62. Option D 
is 50, 51, 55, 56, 60, 61. Now, as per the question, we have find which would be the most likely set of values, kilometers per hour, identified by applying the boundary value analysis, where only the values on the boundaries of the equivalence classes are selected. In option A, 0, 49, and 50 are in the same boundary, and boundary 55 is not covered. With this, it's clear that option A is not the answer. In option B, 50, 55, and 60 are at the boundary, but the second nearby value is missing. In option C, boundary C, 49, and 50 are covering the same condition because 49 and 50 both represents nothing. Similarly, 54 and 55 covers the same condition and boundary 60 is not covered properly. In option D, 50 represents nothing. At 51, warning will be given. At 55, warning will be given. At 56, drivers will be fined. At 60, drivers will find and at 63 licenses will be suspended. So here all the boundaries are covered properly. That is why option D is the answer. Here the question is, in a flight reservation system, the number of available seats in each plane model is an input. A plane may have any positive number of available seats up to the given capacity of the plane. Using boundary value analysis, a list of available seat values was generated. Which of the following lists is correct? And these are the options. Now let's draw the boundary value analysis diagram. As per the question, a plane may have any positive number of available seats up to the given capacity of the plane. As we know, the first positive number is one available seat which a plane can have. And the upped boundary is max capacity of the seats in the plane. In the diagram, any number below one is invalid. Number from one to the max capacity is valid and number above the capacity is invalid. With this, the boundary value analysis diagram is ready. Now let's analyze each of the options to get the correct answer. Option A is 1, 2, capacity minus 1, capacity, capacity plus 1. Option B is 0, 1, capacity, capacity plus 1. Option C is 0, 1, 2, capacity plus 1. A very large number. Option D is 0, 1, 10, 100, capacity, capacity plus 1. As per the question, we have to find which of the following boundary value analysis is correct. Here, if you look into the option B, 0 is in invalid range, 1 is in valid range. Capacity is in valid range and capacity plus is in invalid range. That is why option B is the correct answer.